What's going on, everybody? Welcome to our first Hour of Devastation draft on the channel. Um, we are getting right into it here. Uh, this is, a uh, I just said Amy. Amy's here. I'm not Amy, though. There's a very deep voice for an Amy. My <laughs> name's Joe. And I'm Amy. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we actually start with a pretty sweet pack. So this is our first time drafting Hour of Devastation. We have... I've played in pre-releases for Hour of Devastation. Um, uh, Hour of Revelation is cool, but I don't know that I want to pick that super highly. Eternal of Harsh Truths is a great card, as is Supreme Will. I'm usually not a big counterspell guy, um, but Eternal of Harsh Truths is a great card. I know that Supreme Will is also here, so we're kind of... Uh, maybe sending a signal that blue is open by keeping, like, passing the Supreme Will, but... Well, it's the first pack, so... That too, but I don't know. I mean, like, because there's the Frontline Devastator. I haven't really played with a lot of these cards yet. Afflict 2 seems good. It is a 4-drop. Thorn Moloch seems good as well. Sandblast is fantastic, but um, I'm going to try the Eternal and, and see how that goes for us. Ah, we... Do we get paid off? Is this a good card? Flash Flying 3-1... And you can cycle it to counter in a triggered or activated ability. Or we have a 2-3 Flash Flyer for 4. Um, I mean, that seems cool. This is a rare. I don't know that it's amazing. Um, Crypt of the Eternals would be good if we got Nicol Bolas. Um, which, hey, a guy can dream. But, uh, <clears throat> I don't know. There's also a Kenra Scrapper, which is a great card. And the only red card in this entire pack. Um... There's a mountain. <laughs> yeah, there is, in fact, a mountain in here, too. Um, and, I mean, it sucks because we did pass some good red in the, from the first pack, but I liked Eternal uh, pretty well. So, I... Are you good, Nimble Obstructionist? Tell me if you're good. It's three mana to cycle it, too, but it also has Flash, so you could just, if they don't play anything that you would want to counter, um, then you can just flash it out as a 3-1. And it has flying, so it can get in for some damage. So and that's my kind of my feeling on that and why I picked it. Um, Hour of Promise is good if you have deserts. It's five mana. Search your library for two lands, put them onto the battlefield, tapped, and then shuffle. And then if you have three or more deserts, which means unless you already have uh, two or more deserts, you're going to search for two deserts. Um, I, I just don't know that it's good enough. This one, I also don't think is good enough. It adds a colorless, and then if you sack it to one of the other uncommon deserts, you get a 2-2 black zombie. Um, the, the only blue in this pack is Cunning Survivor, which is okay. I don't really like the cycle discard strategy. Sunset Pyramid seems good. It might be a little slow for a draft, but you're drawing cards, you're scrying... It's a mana sink. Um, Vile Manifestation is okay. Uh, again, it, it kind of requires cycling. Um, Granitic Titan, Ronus' Stalwart. I mean, I'm picking the Sunset Pyramid, but I don't know. We'll see. Ooh, there's an Aerial Guide. That's pretty sweet. Um, Doomfall is okay, but it only happens once. I prefer the rare that does this that is the X costing. Um, Scrounger of Souls is nice, too. Um, but Aerial Guide's just amazing. I, I really, really like Aerial Guide, and uh, making the Eternal of Harsh Truths fly is not a bad strategy, because then you can just draw a card off of it not being blocked, as opposed to them being willing to um, block and take the two damage from Afflict. So I like Aerial Guide a lot, and there's really nothing else in this pack that you know pulls me in any other particular direction. Like I said, I actually like Scrounger of Souls a lot. Lifelink is, is pretty good, but it is five mana for a 3-4, so... I'll take uh, I'll take aerial guide. Um, dagger is okay. There is a blue desert here, which is pretty nice. Um, struggle in and of itself uh, is an amazing card. Survive is not, um, but struggle is nice. There's defiant Kenra, which is just a vanilla two two for two. It's straight up a bear. Um, but there's a red desert as well. Crash through is nothing. Oketra's Avenger is okay. Um, Feral Prowler, same thing. So uh, I think I'm going to stick... I, I like this card a lot, and I, I'm i not really sure what the right choice is here between those two, um, because I, I do, like I said, I like Struggle quite a bit. Um, 
but there's also deserts here, and if we can pick up uh, some of the unquenchable thirsts, it'll be nice to have some deserts, so... I'm going to take the blue desert there. Well, if, if we were at all basing this on our past openings, then you'd have a zillion deserts. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. How How is Mirage Mirror still here? This card's awesome. It's Sure, it's a mana sink, but I really, really like this card a lot. I also like Sifter Worm. I mean, it's expensive, and that's kind of not the deck that we're in right now, but it's a 7-7 seven, seven for 7, and you get to scry three, reveal the top card, and then gain life. It's just, it just does so many different things. But I think I'm taking the Mirage Mirror here. I, I, I like Mirage Mirror a lot. I mean, it would be Sifter Worm if not, but I like Mirage Mirror a lot. Dauntless Haven is okay. Disposal Mummy is okay. Firebrand Archer is okay. Um, but I'm, I'm taking Mirage Mirror. There's another Aerial Guide. This is sweet. Yeah, definitely, I'll take that. Um, Dune Diviner is not bad. Uh, I mean, it's a 2-3 three for 3, but it's you want to be gaining life, but you're tapping deserts and stuff. So actually, now that I say that, I'm not exactly sure. Desert of the Indomitable is fine. It's just the green desert. Sandblast is still here and is amazing. Um, but Aerial Guide is just... I don't know. I don't want to say just as good, but it is also good, and it keeps us in our color that we're only in we're also mono three drops at this point um but <laughs> kenra eternal is nice i actually like kenra eternal quite a bit but there's also the avon reed stalker the four mana flash flying two three um which isn't a three drop uh and is blue and is a flyer and it's kind of what we want to be doing there's an unsummon as well um but i'm gonna i'm gonna take this uh two three flash flyer Seer the Last Tomorrow is not good enough. I'm glad that nobody else thought Hour of Revelation was good enough because uh, our rare came back, which kind of feels bad that uh, that our rare came all the way back around. It means we opened a bad rare. I actually like Thorned Moloch. Um, I don't know that we have enough for Prowess, but it's kind of the best card in this pack. Um, so I'm going to take Thorned Moloch. It doesn't mean that I'm automatically in red, but I don't want to be milling. Um, I like milling. Don't get me wrong, but it's still not what I want to be doing. Tragic Lesson's not bad, but I'm going to still take a flyer here. Spellweaver Eternal is is okay. Uh, is Cunning Survivor good enough? Cycle of Discard plus one and can't be blocked. That's not good enough at all. Graven Abomination is garbage. Survivor's Encampment is okay for fixing purposes. Otherwise, we have Dunes of the Dead. I actually think that Survivor's Encampment is better than Dunes of the Dead. I just think it does a better effect. Because um, it's fixing, so I'll take that. Well, there's a Tragic Lesson. I mean, Godfather's Faithful is cool, and we do have a lot of blue, but um, Tragic Lesson is better. It's in our colors, and um, you could probably do some fun things with, like, bouncing a tapped desert and then putting it back out as long as it's not a desert that comes into play tapped. But uh, Wow, a Cunning Survivor or a Crash Through. What a terrible, terrible choice. Um... I guess I'll take Crash Through because we already have Thorn. I really just don't like Cunning Survivor. It's a 1-3, though. I guess I'll take it. And there's another one. Should have taken the other card. That's fine. Uh, let's see what these other two packs have for us. Because this was this was okay. I mean, we're very firmly in blue. And blue seems to be pretty open. Um, but we'll see what they have for us. Earthshaker Kenra is... Wow, this pack is insane. There's an Earthshaker Kenra. There's a Foil uh, Uncommon Blue Desert... There's a River Hoopoo. There's the Flame Tongue Kavu Sand Strangler. This pack is nuts. There's a Puncturing Blow as well. It's just Earthshaker Kenra, though. This card's amazing. Because um, you just play it on turn two, hopefully. Make their only blocker unable to block and attack for two. And then when you eternalize it later in the game, it's just awesome. But this pack's nuts. Like, we're not really in green, but we do have some fixing. But Sand Strangler is amazing, and we have some deserts. Well, if you do blue-red, I mean, there's enough red cards in this pack that you'll have something decent wheel if you just set oh, all those things. Hopefully, yes. Sand Strangler is amazing, and so is Puncturing Blow. So I'm not exactly sure. I mean, River Hoopoo is just incredible. I'm, I'm assuming this 
almost definitely doesn't come back. Appeal to Authority is nuts, but we're not in either of those colors. But it's just going to be the rare here. I feel bad about passing these three, basically. And four, actually, for the Rivulet. But it's going to be the Kenra. Kefnet's last word. Yes, please. <laughs> four mana, steal their best thing. Sure, things don't untap. I don't care. Um, maybe we'll get the Frontline Devastator back later. Or Unquenchable Thirst would be definitely what I would want here. Um, we, Like I said, we're, we're getting Deserts, and so this card's amazing. Even without Deserts, it's not bad, but with Deserts, it's just perfect. But it's definitely Kefnet's last word here. Kefnet's last word is possibly the best of the last cycle, um, or Undying or whatever. Uh, it's, it's, um, it's really good, so I'm going to take that. That's an awesome art, too. Yeah, oh, it's beautiful. That. Whoa! There's another Sand Strangler here, but there's also a Fervent Paincaster um, and an Aerial Guide. I'm assuming the Aerial Guide comes back at this point based on what we've seen. Um, I'm probably just going to take the Sand Strangler. We definitely have a lot of three drops, and this card's awesome, but Sand Strangler does better things. Uh, you can just kill a creature and have a 3-3 three -three if you have a Desert. So, yeah, I'm going to take this guy. This guy's really good. If we get the other one back, I'll be really happy as well, but... Definitely that. Whoa. There's another Ipnu Rivulet. There's Oketra's Last Mercy, which again is okay, but definitely not good enough. Uh, Manticore Eternal, on the other hand, is good enough. It's mm -hmm. a five mana five four with a flicked three that attacks each turn of Fable. I am more than happy to have this thing attack forever. So um yeah, I'll definitely take that. That's really, really good. And like if new if new rivulet is nice, um, it's it mills, but it's still a desert, and I wouldn't be milling, but it's a desert that for things that care about deserts. But I'm taking a five drop. Okay, we've got another Avon Reed Stalker. We've got a blur of blades. Um, that's not terrible. We've got another survivor's encampment that'll come around later. Um, this pack's not incredible for us. Proven combatant is whatever. I mean, it's. One mana for a 1-1, one, one, and then later six mana for a 4-4. Four, four. That's not super exciting. I actually like the Hippo. Um, we're not in green. We're kind of... We're definitely in blue, and we're kind of in red. So I think I'm just going to take the Blur of Blades over the Avon Reed Stalker. Uh, lower costing cards are definitely better. So uh, There's another Scrounger of Souls, but yeah. Like I said, I assume Survivor's Encampment comes back. Uh, Gilded Ceridon is not bad in these colors at all. Why is Ambuscade still here? Oh my god. This card is just straight removal, and then you can attack for... Oh my god. For an extra point of damage on a creature that probably would have been attacking anyway. I'm probably still going to take the Ceridon, but that hurts. Why is this still here? This card's nuts. Um, this card's fine. Active Heroism. The Crook is bad. Um, Kenra Eternal is good, and another Scrounger, but this one's Foil. Um, but it's still going to be Gilded Ceridon for us, again, if we're doing Deserts, which I hope we can still do. Um, Gilded Ceridon's pretty sweet. Well, there's Granitic Titan. There's Tragic Lesson. I might do Granitic Titan. We're, we're kind of getting high on our curve here, but we started getting all of our three drops. So Liliana's Defeat looks nice but i'm not looking to pick up a sideboard card um plus we're not in black so yeah uh so in this i i am floored i want to play with this card so badly and we are in neither of these colors and that makes me mad uh green is pretty obviously open i'm, I'm gonna take the thorn moloch here but this card is insane like i want to play with this card more than any other card in this entire set I'm I'm a little a little salty about that because that card's amazing, um, and black green is my favorite color combo. Our foil Ipnu Rivulet came back, again it is a desert. We could pay a life to add blue. We're not going to need to, but it's a desert to go with our cards that care about deserts. And otherwise, it's Tragic Lesson or Crash Through, and we have one of each of those already. So like I would probably even just take Desert of the Indomitable here, but I'm going to take the Ipnu Rivulet. It's one, it's foil, it's an uncommon, and it's a desert in our color, so. Well, there's either Jace's Defeat, Seer, The Last Tomorrow, or Cunning Survivor, so I guess now is the time that I take a sideboard card. 
Um, we can counter a blue spell for two mana, which is really nice. So I'm going to do that again. I'm not I'm not the milling strategy. I love milling, but this isn't the deck for it, and Cunning Survivor's not good enough, and these two colors were not in. So it could be the Full Art Planes as well, but it's, it's just the sideboard card. And I'll put it where it belongs in the sideboard. There's a Manolith. There's also a Black Desert or a Steadfast Sentinel. Um, hmm... I actually don't know here. I mean, I guess it's just desert. We don't really... Uh, do we need to ramp? Maybe it's just Banalith. We do have some higher drop stuff. So yeah, instead of taking an off-color desert. Um, here, none of these cards are insane, so I'll take a full art land. The dagger isn't necessarily bad. Uh, we could definitely be putting that on stuff. I'll do that. And another full art land over life goes on. And there you go. All right, Amonkhet. <clears throat> You're what I've drafted much more often than Hour of Devastation. So let's see what you have for us. Right now what you have is a big white screen, which is not helpful to me. I can't pick any of those. Ooh. Okay. So we have Neheb. We could splash black. But Open Into Wonder is just better by a lot. Magma Spray is also here. Cryptic Serpent's okay, um, but we, we're not... Like, b despite the fact that we're blue-red, we're really not blue-red spells. Um, but Open Into Wonder is really good. Magma Spray is really good. And I don't really... I mean, just just because we've picked up a lot of basics uh, in Swamps doesn't mean that um, I can really uh, argue for Splashing the Heb or Shadowstorm Vizier. Um, but it's, it's just Open Into Wonder. This card's amazing. <clears throat> so I'm going to go ahead and take that. Oh, look, a Dispossess. Um, wow, this pack's real bad for us. Real, real bad. Wow. It's just, is it just Ancient Crab? Like, <laughs> Dispossess. <Yes. laughs> Amy loves Ancient Crab. I do not second pick in a pack, though. Like, I would take Naga Vitalist over it, but we're not in green. Um, there's the only artifact, like, this is just unplayable, the Luxa River Shrine, and Bantu's Monument cares about black creatures. Um, it, it's probably just Ancient Crab. It's another three drop, too, which we just straight up don't need. Um, Nimble Blade Kenra is okay. Do we have enough spells? We have 15 creatures, but 26 cards. Well, 23 cards, so, uh, maybe it's the Nimble Blade Kenra. Sorry, Amy. Uh, Prowess. With uh, uh with our <laughs> with our spells is probably a little bit more important. Ancient crab always gets chipped. Well, ancient crab's pretty sweet. Don't get me wrong, but yeah, it's probably just the Kenra. Um, there's onward the onward half of onward to victory, which is not bad. You just double a creature's power. Um, tormenting voice is okay. I'm assuming we'll get those later. Scribe of the mindful to get something back. I don't know that that's good enough. Ugh, these packs are really bad for us. Like, I mean, in general, these packs aren't super strong. I mean, Naga Vitalist has been in both, and that card's great. I like Festering Mummy. I don't like but Compelling Argument. Nobody's in green, so... Or black, apparently, and with, um, with the spider coming around so late. But maybe it is just because nobody's in green. But, yeah, I'm going to take Onward to Victory. Um, I don't know that we'll ever get to play Victory, although we, I guess we have uh, the Survivor's Encampment and uh, Manolith for splashing so uh onward to victory it is well that's pretty sweet this pack's much better for us there's a shimmer scale drake a floodwaters a consuming fervor a curator of mysteries by the way that's the pick uh or a blazing volley which will likely come around later but um yeah these cards are great i actually like consuming fervor a lot i know some people aren't so high on it but i do i do really enjoy it but it's just totally Curator of Mysteries. I don't even know that we have a lot of cycling, but it's still a 4-4 for 4, four, four uh, with flying. So if we get to scry one every once in a while, great. But even if we don't, I'll play a 4-4 for 4, four, four with flying. Um, hopefully Floodwaters comes back. Um, actually, any of those that I mentioned. Floodwaters, Shimmer Scale, or Consuming Fervor. Another open into Wonder. Uh, we have 17 creatures, so... Yeah, we could definitely do that. I mean, River Serpent is here as well. That card's not bad at all. Um, Fling, 
Uh, fling is more important in aggressive decks, and we're kind of half and half. So I'm going to take Open Into Wonder again. Um, I, I like that card. Grasping Dunes is not bad, but it might come around. We only have three deserts, so... Um, but Open Into Wonder was good enough for us to first pick, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to stick with it. Well, there's River Serpent or Hyena Pack... Um, I think with, hmm, looking at what we have, I mean, you know, these two care about minus one, minus one counters, but we're not in black and nothing else is really amazing. Like this is fine, but again, also not amazing. Uh, I'm going to go with river serpent over the hyena pack. I think, I think that's the better option here. This, you know, is an amazing blocker for six mana. So. I'll do that. Uh, and then... <sighs> darn it. The Honored Crop Captain is still here. Um, is, is nobody in white either? Why is this card still here? True Heart Duelist as well? It's like the same thing. Uh, Manticore of the Gauntlet is nice. Uh, Decision Paralysis is also nice. Um, hmm... I don't know that we have a lot of removal, so I might... And this isn't technically removal, I get it, but it takes care of two creatures for two turns. That's not bad at all. Plus, it's a um, an instant, so it works for now things that care about spells. Uh, I like Manticore a lot, but we already have a Manticore. Um, so, yeah, I'll go with the Decision Paralysis. What else do we have? Watchers of the Dead is bad, no way. Desert Ceridon's okay. It cycles early on. Essence Scatter is fine. Um, Cascading Cataracts is bad. We could <laughs> we could pick a Full Art Swamp again. Um, I think we'll go with the Ceridon here. We're probably going to be making some cuts on our top end and possibly in our three-drop slot, but uh, I'll take the Ceridon. Okay. Um, the Cryptic Serpent came back. Costs one less for each instant or sorcery card in your graveyard. Ugh, we could do it. Couldn't we? Could we do it? With 19 creatures out of 11, and uh, with 11 spells, <sighs> we could. I mean, we definitely could do this. It's, it's, we're not really giving up a lot. Like, I probably would have just picked Brute Strength, so we'll try it. Worst comes to worst, it comes out for sideboarding. Hey, look, Amy. Your ancient crab came back. Like he likes us. It's or like no one else likes him. <laughs> How is no, Nagavitalist like still here? That's crazy. All right, I guess no, I'll take a. I know. I guess not. I'll take a scribe of the mindful. Ugh. Uh, I'll take a compelling argument. There's no way I'm playing it though. I'll take a tormenting voice. Ugh, I'll take an island. <laughs> Trust Trust Curse is terrible. Uh, <laughs> all right, uh, we've got cuts to make. <laughs> let's uh, let's get into making this deck. Um, okay, so we have these cards. Will make it, but for now they go over here. Let's um, group creatures separately from spells. Yeah, we've got a lot more spells than I thought. I mean, like, I knew the number, but I couldn't think of them offhand. Eh, this is not... These don't count, though. These, like, artifacts that stay on the field don't count as instants or sorceries. So we just have four less. So we have... Three, five, six, eight. Ugh. <clears throat> That's not super good. And what do we have? Three deserts? Okay, well, we're kind of all over the place in terms of what we're doing. That kind of sucks. So maybe we just cut Cryptic Serpent. I think we can cut Tormenting Voice. We gotta do a lot of cuts regardless, so let's see what we're getting rid of here. I want to try Mirage Mirror. I really do. Um, Sunset Pyramid might not be bad, but I don't know yet, so I'm gonna put it in the side to start. <sighs> Are we more aggressive? I think we are. So I guess I keep the dagger. Let's get rid of... Hmm. I did say we were aggressive, but I kind of want to get rid of Onward to Victory. 
It's three mana, an instant, and you double a creature's power. And we have big stuff on the top end. Plus, like, you know, Curator of Mysteries is still a 4-4. Four, four. These guys are two threes. But do I want to deal tap three mana to deal two extra damage or three extra damage? Like, three, three mana to deal five extra here or four extra here or any, any of these really is great. Um... <clears throat> I just don't know. I mean, we've got, like I said, we've got the removal here in Decision Paralysis. I think Scribe of the Mindful comes out. We don't need that, especially we were talking about our lack of spells. <sighs> yeah, I guess it's good enough. Um, <clears throat> am I keeping in your Ancient Crab? If I'll be helpful, yeah, but if not... <laughs> oh, we have two Cunning Survivors? Those can go away. Uh, I forgot about that. So that's good. We're We're... Down to five more cuts. Um, I like our creature number. Like this is this is nice. Um, I I think ancient crab is a little bit opposite of what we're trying to do because we're trying to get stuff down. And these have first strike when attacking. This has prowess. This guy has haste and can make stuff not block. We've got flyers in the air. This kills a creature when it comes out, and then these swing for big. So I think ancient crab is like the opposite of what we're trying to do. Because <clears throat> I don't want to have to be defensive, so um, which is what Open Into Wonder is for also, which is kind of why I want Onward to Victory. I think Decision Paralysis works really well for that as well. I might take out Tragic Lesson for now. Um, this is not bad, but do I keep it? I don't think so. Again, I think it's a little bit extra of what, than what we're trying to do. We're not really going to necessarily have tons of cards in our graveyard. Plus, we have three six drops, so that can go away. We need one more cut. Um, there's probably just something I'm missing, but maybe not. Um, do we need Manolith? I don't think so. We do have, uh, again, we have higher end stuff, but... <sighs> I don't know. I don't think so. I think I'm going to get rid of Manolith. Mirage Mirror is nice because it can copy like a bird or something bigger. Um, and uh, we'll see. Yeah, and Sand Strangler. We have three deserts and we're going to play all three of them. Um, so Sand Strangler, I mean, worst comes to worst is a 3-3 three, three for 4 and we can side it out for something else. Um, but I think I think this is our 23. I think that we can add in our deserts. Um, so we have three deserts. Two of them make blue and one of them makes whatever we need it to make if we tap an untapped creature, which I'd rather not do. Um, with 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12 red mana symbols. And 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7... 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. 15 blue mana symbols? I mean... Um, we already have the deserts here, and so the, the blue... Well, this doesn't produce blue unless I pay a life, but this one does. Um, and again, this one... I'd rather not be tapping untapped creatures for that, but it's still a desert, so... <clears throat> um, I will probably add in... I mean, we'll do that... Um, Let's see what Magic Online recommends. Six and six. And one white. So we'll get rid of the white, because I don't care. Um, and we'll add an extra red. Um, extra red? Yeah, because we have we have the, the... First of all, we already have an island that I added in that we had drafted. And we I didn't have this was actually counted. Yeah, you, well, I, I I transferred it in, and we have the two deserts, one of which always produces blue, and the other one, if I pay a life, produces blue. Which, if I need to, I can. It's not that big of a deal. So yeah, I think it's going to be seven six here. I'll add that to the deck, and that's our forty. Um, so yeah, we're gonna save this deck. Amy's gonna uh, probably head out. It'll just be me doing the the rounds and stuff, but. We'll be back to you guys uh, in just a second with uh, round one. All right, as promised, we are going to start round one. I've already clicked join match. Here we go. 
Um, all right, we, they're playing first. This is not a bad hand. Desert of Mindful turned one. We've got a turn three and a turn four. It's not amazing. We could be faster, but I'm okay with it. I'm definitely not going to complain. Okay, it's a cat. Cat happens. Okay, we'll play the desert. Um, that's our turn. <clears throat> We're going to take some damage and they're going to gain some life, at least until turn three with the aerial guide. We've got Sand Strangler too, which is nice, but... Yep, we're taking damage. They gain a life. Ooh, we got Mirage Mirror too. That's pretty sweet. Um, we're still doing nothing. <laughs> Unfortunate. Yeah, I'm hoping this is good. I really don't know. Um, we are going to have to wait because stuff... I'd rather play a creature on turn three that becomes more impactful and they have a three two life linker because they have a desert a black desert Ooh, we have curator of mysteries though yeah long game i think we're okay short game not so much uh let's do aerial guide first i think that's the proper play here um Right? I mean, it's a 2-2 flyer, so it can kill the Sacred Cat, but I don't know that I'm... I'm not blocking the Solitary Camel, so, yeah. Um, all right, that's our turn. Let's see. I, I mean, again, this is my first Hour of Devastation draft. I, I, again, I played in Sealed and did okay. All right, so either they're three colors or they took this just because it was a desert and they needed one. So far, they've only played white, but it looks like they may have just been looking for the green. Um, they are attacking with both, and they do have green now. But I've got a lot of stuff going on, so I'm going to block and see what they have. I mean, if it dies, it dies, and they can just bring it back, but and they'll still gain the life. But I assume they're putting a pump spell of some kind. Oh, it's just Sandblast. That seems aggressive. Okay. Um... I will happily play a Curator of Mysteries this turn. Ooh, or do I wait with the Avon Reed Stalker? No, I think it's still just Curator of Mysteries. If we get a land, Gilded Ceridon's real nice, because um, we have a, a desert already, so. But yeah, this is our turn. Um, <laughs> curator of Mysteries uh, blocks very nicely. Okay, looks like they are, in fact, three colors. <clears throat> That'll be good to remember. I don't think we took any violent impacts. Not that we would probably board them in anyway, but... Uh, so if it attacks, you can exert it and prevent all combat damage. That's fine. <clears throat> That's not as much of a concern. Okay, so they can make 1-1s one with Vigilance by exerting. They probably should have done this all post-combat. I would have been a lot more scared of combat tricks if they actually are planning on attacking. They're not, so never mind. Okay. Uh, well, I do have a fifth land. Um, do I attack this turn? This kills the camel and leaves me with a 3-3, three, three, which means that this is a problem. I could just kill that instead, but I think the camel is more worth it to kill. There's also decision paralysis, and I could like keep back that and Avon Reed Stalker. I could also Mirage Mirror and keep up activation of Mirage Mirror. I could just play the Gilded Ceridon as a 4-4. Four, four. There's a lot of options here. I'm going to, regardless, I'm going to go to combat and I'm going to attack. That happens first. Okay, now I will play a land, and I think I just want to keep up the pressure, so I'm going to play Gilded Ceridon. If they attack with the Life Linker, I'll block it. If they attack with this thing, even if they exert it, I can still block it, although 
they do have um, combat trick colors or minus one, minus one counters and stuff. Fanbear is pretty good. I might be able to tap that, though, for two turns. All right, so they're going to make a warrior. That's fine. We got two more turns before they do that again. They are still tapping out and playing stuff. Uh, two, five, dutiful servants. That's fine. Um, it blocks pretty nicely, but still. I assume they're not attacking again? Maybe they are. Maybe they exert this guy. Nope. Okay. <clears throat> Seems pretty good for us. We just lock down the board. Um, hmm. Okay. Well. If we attack with both, we can't, we can't play this yet, which kind of stinks. But if we attack with both, we make the 2-5 unable to block so that they have to block with something of consequence that will die but presumably since it doesn't have trample they could just block with like this thing or this thing um so i might just attack with the flyer they're at 21 i'm at 15 so i can bring them to 17 just by attacking with this guy um hmm I just don't know if it's right to play Mirage Mirror or other stuff. Is that why Mirage Mirror is bad? Because you never know when to waste a turn playing it. Because um, we're not really defensive, so that kind of stinks. Um, we have a desert. We can deal three damage to something and kill it. And I think it's it's between these two that I want to kill. Although I might just kill the Fan Bearer to be able to get in for more damage. Let's... Let's do the combat thing, then I'll play the Sand Strangler, and, um, yeah. On attacks, let's activate on the 2-5, so the 2-5 can't block. And we'll see if they double block, trade stuff off, whatever. They don't? Sweet. Okay. Uh, let's play... the sand strangler and kill the fan bear out of all these things i don't know that that was the right choice but i don't really like fan bear it's kind of annoying so we'll just do that yes i'll definitely use its ability um that's my turn i have a three three i can trade this thing off um if they exert i won't block here but i could trade off for the camel if i need to or have it to block these small guys so I don't know. They haven't really been attacking for the past couple of turns anyway, so <clears throat> we'll see. If I draw a land, I could play this guy next turn. It does have four toughness, so again, they'd have to double block to kill it. They are attacking. They are attacking and exerting as well. Um, I will offer the trade with the camel... Because I've wanted to get rid of it. If they have a combat trick, they have a combat trick. I'd rather make them use it. They don't. Sweet. So I take three. And they lost their lifelinker. They did gain life. Ooh. Okay. So I could draw cards. Um, this thing's already exerted, so it's not untapping next turn. They have a 2-5, which I can still make unable to block. Although, with open into wonder, they can't block anyway. Um... But I get to draw cards if I do that. And I can activate it twice. It'll leave me with one mana, which... Cycle Desert Saradon? If I cycle Desert Saradon, then drawing these cards becomes better because I can maybe scry a land away or something um, to draw something better with the Curator of Mysteries. So maybe I just do that. Maybe that's what I do this turn. Just deal eight damage bring them to eight um i can then tap stuff down and do other shenanigans next turn to maybe even just win but if they crack back one two three four five six and i'm at 12 and they don't have anything in their graveyard that they can bring back so yeah i mean it's a little risky but i think this is a better turn to do it than to wait and have me be at a more precarious life total so let's try this i'll cycle when I cycle, I'll scry. It goes to the bottom. Good thing I did that. I like that. Uh, then this happens, and I draw a card. Which is another Avon Reed Stalker. That's fine. 
So let's choose these two creatures. And then we're going to do tap four and use it. All right, go to combat. You're going to take eight, and I'm going to draw two cards. Seems pretty awesome. They couldn't have blocked the curator anyway, but still. Oh, and I can do this. It doesn't really matter. Because they still can't block, so... Let's see what happens. Triggered abilities happen. I draw cards. I draw a land and a land. Okay. <laughs> well, I haven't played a land this turn, so I might as well play a land. And now I have one. It would have been two if I hadn't cycled, but still, that's fine. There's nothing I can play for two anyway, so... That's fine. Although there were, what, three lands in a row? Oh no, there were there was land, Aven Reedstalker, land, land on top. So I like being able to dig through that. Hopefully that's, uh, if there was a land clump, I just got through it. Decimator Beetle's good. Uh, put a minus one, minus one counter on target creature you control, and then when it attacks. Well, hopefully decision paralysis will prevent you from attacking until the end of this game. So let's see what you shrink. You kill the Sacred Cat. You don't have a white anymore, though, because you tapped your lands wrong, because you could have just embalmed it this turn. You're going to make another warrior. That's fine. It's exerted, too, so I probably will just... Hmm. I can only decision paralysis two things. Oh, yes, they... Oh, but it has vigilance. I was going to say, yes, they attacked, but again, it has vigilance, so... <clears throat> Not as good. Uh, they were smart enough to know that they needed blockers because I can decision paralysis tap two things and then make this make one of them unable to block but they can still block with the other so they don't automatically lose um Thorn Moloch uh not necessarily right now I think what I'm gonna do is I'll play a land I have seven available I think I'm gonna play Mirage Mirror because if I have to, I can flash this in or I can use this as an instant. Um, I'm going to attack, make the Decimator Beetle unable to... Uh, hmm. Yeah, I guess I attack, I make the Decimator Beetle unable to block. I put a Mirage Mirror out there. So I can tap two for the Mirage Mirror if I want to twice. Or I can even Reed Stalker, but I'll have already Decision Paralysis. So, hmm. No, yeah, that's what I'll do. I Mirage Mirror and then keep up Reed Stalker, Reed Stalker, or Decision Paralysis, or Double Activation on the Mirror. So let's do the three red, because we're not playing the Thorn Moloch, so I'm not as concerned about red. We play the Mirage Mirror out. I don't care if I show it to them. I don't think it's anything that they're going to be playing around regardless. Let's go to Combat. I guess I'll attack with both. I have two deserts now. Uh, and I'll... I mean, they're still... They're just going to block with the 2-5. And that's fine. I mean, I guess that's kind of a throwaway, but still. They don't know what else I have, if anything. Which, right now, is nothing. But still. Yeah, that's fine. Oh. Okay. Cool. Well, I will clearly kill these guys, since I can't kill the 2-5. That's fine. It's totally fine. <clears throat> yep. Um, they took four. They're at four. So if they can't find a way to deal with my Curator of Mysteries, they just lose. Although, yeah, because I'm going to tap I'm gonna tap this down. So four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Yeah, I mean, it could kill me if I didn't have Decision Paralysis. And they're not playing blue, so they can't counter stuff. So when they go to combat, I will uh, tap their... 4-5 and they're 3-1. Oh, I could also Mirage Mirror to block. So, either way. Okay, they'll embalm the Sacred Cat. That's a 1-1 Lifelinker. That's fine. They're going to combat, which I didn't... But that's... Yeah, I'm going to Mirage Mirror. That's kind of the point. So, they're removing a minus 1-1 minus one counter, which they don't have. So that's that's fine. Um, 
well, I guess in declare attackers, what do I what do I make a copy of? I guess I make a copy of this two five, and block the decimator beetle with it. Because I can't. They didn't exert this, so I could. Um. I could copy Curator of Mysteries too and just kill the three one, but I, I'm 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 gonna want to be blocking this, so, uh, but it doesn't have trample or anything, so maybe I just I'll copy their Sacred Cat and gain a life. I could also just flash in Aven Reed Stalker, so I have another flying creature and take seven, but they could have Pump for plus four, so that's fine. Let me let me see what's going on here. We're gonna um. Yeah, we're going to use Mirage Mirror. We're going to tap 2 and use Mirage Mirror's ability. And I'm going to copy the... The Dutiful Servants, so it doesn't die in the process. Copy the Dutiful Servants. We're still in Declare Attackers. I'll go to Declare Blockers and block the 4-5. If they kill the Mirage Mirror, they kill the Mirage Mirror. They were able to put a minus one, minus one counter on this, but I can still tap stuff down, so it's not a huge deal. Good. I go to six. They're at four. I can just make the Mirage Mirror a copy of this, and they, so far, have not been able to play anything to stop a flyer, so I just win. Don't I? And there's an Earthshaker Kenra. I don't want to show them that, though, so let me see if I can just... Tap two, make the Mirage Mirror a copy of the Curator of Mysteries, and attack. If they can stop it, then we have Decision Paralysis to help us out, but otherwise they're just taking seven in the air right now that I don't know if they can stop. They cannot. Okay, yeah, it's. I'm glad I didn't show them the Kenra then. Let's go to sideboard. <laughs> They have, I mean, they have a lot of threats. Um, does Blur of Blades help? Yes, I think it does, actually. They did have the 3-1 the guy. That was kind of a big deal. Plus, minus one, minus one counters in general. They can get around it with the Decimator Beetle, but, it, I mean, it would kill their Sacred Cat. It would kill their 3-1, the Oketra's uh, Avenger, whatever it is. Um, they didn't have blue, so Jace's Defeat is nothing. We have not had a lot with Cryptic Serpent. Um... River Serpent's not bad. I mean, we didn't have a lot of cards in our graveyard, but uh, it's a good blocker. Uh, Ancient Crab, same thing. Tragic Lessons, okay. Scribe of the Mindful's okay. Cunning Survivors are nothing. Compelling Arguments, nothing. So I think at this point, the only thing that I would want to side in would be Blur of Blades. Um, I want Onward, because they can't deal with Flyers, so beefing up my Flyers would be important. So if I put in Blur of Blades, I don't want to take out the dagger. The dagger work would have worked very nicely. We didn't see it, but was there anything worth stealing? Maybe Decimator Beetle, but I don't know that that's worth losing all our lands untapping the next turn. They do exert a lot, so we could kind of get them with that. There's a They had a Fan Bearer as well. Um, we didn't see a lot of our top end. Uh, I guess we saw the Ceridons. Um, <clears throat> this is once again a three drop, not a, not a six drop, but, um, we saw one open into wonder that worked really well. I don't know what, if anything, we would get rid of. Eternal of Harsh Truths seems okay. Um, they didn't really have a lot of three or higher power. They had that two five and the one ones, and they're more than welcome to block with that. This guy would still live and they'd take damage. So, hmm, I'm running out of time. What do I get? What would I get rid of, if anything? Let me get rid of Kefnet's last word. If they play something crazy, I'm already up a game, so I'll submit that. Put in the blur of blades for Kefnet's last word, and we'll see what happens. <clears throat> I assume they're playing first. We have two red, no blue, and we have a cycling for two, and that's it. Ugh, I really don't like mulliganing, but. I think I have to here. Like, these cards are great, but if I don't draw a blue, we're just going to sit here all game and do nothing but cycle once. So I'm going to have to mulligan. Okay. Uh, we have Earthshaker Kenra and 
Uh, Eternal of Harsh Truths. That's fantastic. I like that a lot. This hand I will keep. Even Reed Stalker being on top with three lands? That should still be fine. We're on the draw. I'll keep it on top. One more land and we have it. So yeah, I think that's fine. They've already seen the Rivulet. Not that we're using that as part of our strategy or anything. So that's it for us. We'll play the Rivulet. I know it doesn't tap for blue, but we can play red next turn for the Kenra and um, blue the turn after for the Eternal. So <clears throat> I figured I'd play the Rivulet first. We're not doing anything to stop this from happening. That's fine. Can they do anything for two? They can. Oh, they just have another Sacred Cat. Okay. I'm not as concerned about Sacred Cats. Oh, but Fan Bear, on the other hand, I am. What a, what a sweet curve. Um, okay, and this... Well, that sucks. They just played two creatures out and just brick us on Earthshaker Ken right now? That's really rough. Um, okay. I mean, I guess I'll cycle the Ceridon, but we're going to be taking, what, three damage next turn? And they're just going to have a tapper for everything for a while? That's really rough. Um, that's fine. We'll end our turn here. <clears throat> Alright, so they have a tapped black. That's good for us. Sure, I take three. I'll uh, freak him out a little and cycle this guy for a red. Okay. Draw a red. Alright. It's a land. I definitely won't complain about lands. They are tapped out now, so if they can play two more creatures, then they brick us again on the Kenra, but otherwise we're doing pretty well. Ooh, Thorn Moloch 2. Alright, so we have the opportunity for a 3-mana card this turn. This stops everything on their field. Well, technically, Fan Bear can attack without issue, but... Um, we, we want to be attacking with it, but still, it can be back as a blocker until it attacks. Um, and I'm okay with that. So let's, let's try that first. Because the Kenra is one thing, but... Yeah, we'll do that later. Let's do this and play the Eternal. It's a 1-3, a flick 2. I like it. It was our pack 1 pick 1, I think. So, if I remember correctly. So there you go. And that's our turn. They can attack with their 1-1s one all day. <clears throat> I will block. Okay, so they're off green. That's either good for us or they just have no green in their hand and it doesn't matter, but... Yeah, this was a good start, but if they have nothing else, then I think we're okay here. They're going to combat. They're still attacking. That's fine. They'll gain life. I'll probably still block. This is not the most effective thing in our hand. So, I'll block one of them. Again, I'll make you have combat tricks now if you're going to have them. Salt Blast, for example. Oh, it's just Splendid Agony. So they get to kill it. Okay. That's fine. They gain two more life and go to 25. Again, these other cards are more impactful. So, um, <laughs> Granitic Titan, nice. Uh, all right, so we have four mana available. Which means that we probably just... Hmm... It's a 2-2. Two, two. <clears throat> I think we play out... Let's do... Hmm. Yeah, I think this turn we do Thorn Moloch. It's a 2-2. Two, two. On a turn that we play Decision Paralysis... Uh, it can become a 3-3 three, three with first strike, but it doesn't really need it. And obviously if it's attacking, but it doesn't need it right now. Okay, that took forever. Um, all right, so we play that, and that's, that's the end of our turn.
Now on their turn, what do they do? They cycle Azeketh's right. That's fine. What does it do again? It's a it's a tutor. Okay. They play a desert. They still have no green. And we have two cards in hand. They go to combat. They don't attack. Well, that's good. Ooh, okay. So we just have mono flash flyers now. Um, <laughs> that'd actually be kind of funny. We could go to combat, and then if they try to tap it, we can counter it, but then we have to cycle this. Eh. We'll just we'll just go to combat and see if they tap the Thorn Moloch. I'm assuming they do. What else would they be doing this turn? Yeah. That's fine. It happens. I'm not going to counter it with this. I'd rather have that for blocking, or I'm sorry, for attacking, not blocking at all. That would be stupid. <clears throat> I'll just block with this sweet 3-1. With flying that my we know my opponent can't deal with. Alright, so they're going to be making 1-1s one every other turn. That is fine. I don't have anything here. I'll wait till after they declare attackers. They declare those two as attackers. Let's flash this guy in. And then go to blockers. And block. They still gain the life, but one of their cats is dead that they can bring back right now if they really want. They sure do. That's fine. Because <clears throat> I heard that you can't deal with flyers. Let's... Hmm... This eternalizes for six, which if we draw an untapped land next turn, we can just do. So I think we do that. I mean, this comes into play tap now. That's fine. This is two, but this is four, and this is three. So, hmm. Let's go to combat first. I'm assuming they're tapping our flyer. They are means we can attack with this it has first strike so i'm assuming they're just not blocking in general um <clears throat> but if they do we can decision paralysis if we have to to save it nope we're fine so they take two they go to 25 <sighs> now we can cycle this and earth shaker kenra but obviously that would be stupid because it has haste, so we should have just done it if we were attacking, but there were both of these, so I'm going to leave these, um, leave them both up, because if we need to tap stuff when they go to attacks, we can tap stuff, um, but they're they're just exerting this thing and then presumably going to combat, and I'll just tap the fan bearer and the one of the sacred cats, I guess. Yeah, that happens, I doesn't matter to me right now when they go to combat though i will decision paralysis yeah because like i said nimble instructionist uh, obstructionist is not a blocker so let's tap the fan bearer and mm, this cat i guess Oh, prowess trigger, sweet. <laughs> Doesn't matter right now, but that's fine. I'll tap those two things. Um, and they can attack for two if they really want. Okay, they attack for one. That's fine. I go to 13. Okay. Do I draw a land? That'd be sweet. Granitic Titan. Uh, uh. Even of Enduring Hope, they do have a way of dealing with flyers. It's a 3-3, and they gain 3 when it enters the battlefield. I assume they have the horse. Can we talk about this for a second? I assume they have the Crested Sun Mare. Look at all this life gain. Um, 
Okay. I think I think this nimble obstructionist will in fact be staying back to block. Um I think we're going to Earthshaker Kenra leaving up nimble obstructionist. So let's do that. Again, I really just want Earthshaker Kenra in the graveyard so that it can come out as a hasty 4-4 four, four eternal. Um, and we will just make the 1-1 one, one unable to block. Unable to block or unable to block it? Just unable to block in general. That's sweet. <clears throat> I'll attack all out. Uh, I... Ooh. That's actually a tough choice. This is a prowess first striker, and this is a 2-1, and I don't really want to sack my flyer because I know that the nimble obstructionist can just kill the 3-3, but I'll bluff the other ones. We'll see what happens. I have three cards in hand and three blue mana open, so I hope they don't call my bluff and block this first striker. I hope they just block this and put it in the graveyard. Or not block at all. That's also fine. Because at this point, I think, I think unfortunately, like I said, I think Nibble Instructionist at this point is a blocker for a 3-3. Three, three. So, they are not blocking. That is sweet. Okay. And they go to 25. All right. Uh, and that's going to be my turn. And when you would go to attacks, I'm going to block with the Nibble Instructionist. But <clears throat> as opposed to this guy, although this guy can block either of these two very nicely, so... Still no green, but they only have two cards in hand, so it's not that oppressive for them. They're still doing very well. Um, okay, they're going to attacks. Sweet. Well, I really hope they don't have something to save themselves from this. Yes. Flash Flyer. Do I double block? Maybe I do, if they have a pump, because they can only kill one. Uh, and if they kill this, this has more attack power, and they have no other way of dealing with it. So we're still in Declare Attackers. Now we're in Declare Blockers. I will happily double block that. Sweet. Let's do that. Even if they have pump, uh, I don't know that it would pump more than two toughness. So it still dies. I assume they want to kill the 3-1, but... Uh, it's got to feel bad either way. Okay, they killed the 2-3. That's sweet. We just have an aerial guide that can make, like, this fly, or this if we get 6 mana. Or a 6th mana, I should say. We should... I, I would like to draw more things. Maybe get a, uh... Ooh, okay. How many things with cycling do you have? One. One. Okay. So it's a 1-4. That's not bad. On the ground? <clears throat> Jeez. Oh, okay. I was like, what is this? It's just a 2-5 again. That's fine. Earthshaker Kenra is just going to keep attacking. We do have a desert. This can deal 3 damage to target creature. So maybe... Oh, we do this after attacks then. Very much after attacks. Because sure, we could kill the fan bearer, but I'd rather kill this or this to be able to let other things keep getting in. Um, all right, let's go to attacks. Can they kill me? One, two if they cycle, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. No? Well, I'm, plus I'm going to place something, so yeah, I'll just attack with everything. Let's see what they've got. <laughs> wow. <laughs> wow, wow, wow. All right. Um, yeah, I guess <sighs> that's tough. I guess I'll kill the 2-5. 
Will I? No, I guess I'll kill the one four. That's fine. First strike happens. Regular damage happens. That's fine. Uh, Earthseeker Kenra I can't do until I have six, so I'm going to do one, two, three, four for the Sand Strangler. I have a desert, and I will kill the Vile Manifestation. Alright, going to have to play a little bit faster, because if I lose this game, which it kind of looks like I'm going to, my clock is going to be terrible. <clears throat> okay, they have their 3-1. Maybe I'll draw Blur of Blades. They make another token. They go to combat. And they don't attack. <laughs> That's good to know. Oh, I have a sixth land. Well... If Earthshaker Kenra comes out, it makes the Dutiful Servants unable to block and then attacks in. Call from Adnan County. Call from Adnan County. Call from Adnan County. From Adnan County. All right. Well, a uh, little bit of a glitch there, but we um, we played the Granitic Titan and passed. They tapped our. Uh, flyer, which makes sense. I just, ew, wow, okay. Well, uh, open into wonder. Okay, I could draw some cards. Um, I could make all three of them unblockable, but they're gonna just... I'll make... Yeah, they're just gonna tap one of them, but still, open into wonder is still fine. I'll choose all three. Um, they're probably just gonna kill me, but I need to make some quick decisions here. So I'll choose that. One, a blue, a blue, two, and three. <clears throat> They're just going to tap something with the fan bear. I actually assume it's going to be the 5 4 at this point. It doesn't matter what they choose. That's fine. Still going to attack. Whoops, we're not in combat yet. There we go. Now I attack with all. Draw two cards, they take six. Yes, yes, they both happen. Let's go. Okay, I'll play the land and pass. I can open into wonder again next turn. That's pretty cool. It's still only going to be six damage, but yes, they make a warrior. That's fine. They don't attack. I play another land? Oh my god. Okay. Um, I'm going to open into Wonder again on all three. Yes. XX. One. Two. Three. They tap the 5 4 again. That's fine. <laughs> I go to combat. Uh, I probably should have uh, Earthshaker Kenrid this turn, but uh, I wouldn't have had open into wonder regardless then. So <clears throat> take six, you go to ten. I draw two cards. Oh my god, hurry up. It's a land. Uh, I guess I'll pay the life. For a blue, two red, I probably just tapped wrong, and that's totally fine, and then we will end our turn. <clears throat> I have a 2-2 two -two if I really have to block, but 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9? They can't kill me, and they're going to have some real problems dealing with the rest of this stuff. Exile, oh, okay, so they exile my Earthshaker Kenra, that's fine. Oh well, 
Goodbye, Kenra. It's a good, good card for them. It's not the Kenra? It's not the... It's the Desert Ceridon? That was an odd choice. Hmm. Okay. Well, this is important. Let's play a land. I have four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Okay, so I can do both. I'll tap five and play this. They'll tap my 5-4 again? No, my flyer. Okay. I guess they'll ch decide to trade off. Oh, actually, I'm just going to give him flying. So that's fine. Go to combat. I'm going to attack with all creatures. And I'm going to give this guy flying. So you just take seven in the air. Oh my god. I'm so low on time. If I lose this game, I just lose. That's fine. You can gain a life. Uh, this is so close. Oh my god. Right, well, I was going to say, right now I just killed the 2-3 instead of the 1-1. One, one. Okay. That's two 1-1s one, and they're gaining two life off of it. I mean, obviously they're going to block with something else. It's presumably just the 2-5, no? Okay, I guess not. That's fine. I do have mana and a card in hand, but uh, yeah, that's that's fine. We'll kill the lifelinkers. <clears throat> well, it's actually, it is all three, but still. Okay. All right, it's their turn. If they attack, I'll play this. Otherwise, on their end step, I'll play it. What are they playing? Okay. So they're going to put the minus one, minus one on my 5-4 and kill it and hope that that wins them. The oh, they put it on my 2-2. Two -two. Okay. So they can't. I can't make my 5-4 fly this time. So then they'll just kill it for another black. That's fine. Are you attacking? I have a 5-4. I dealt the attack. Oh, they got a green. Oh, but they don't have any cards in their hands, so it wasn't something that they were looking for. They go to combat. At this point, they're just waiting my clock out. Uh, one, two, three, four. Play another flyer. Okay, my turn. I'll play Mirage Mirror. Sweet. You know what? I'm actually gonna do this. Yeah, I, I did. I did that. I clicked on this guy. Okay. Earthshaker Kenra. Nah, I'm out of time. Oh, that's so frustrating. That's so frustrating. <sighs> it happens, though. That's game. The game has, in fact, ended, and this guy wins the match having won no games. That's rough. <sighs> All right, we'll go to round two in a second. Well, it was a disappointing round one. In fact, a very disappointing round one, but at least we know the deck is good, at least against that one. Um, I liked it a lot, so let's, uh, yes, I do want to play first. Let's try to play faster, maybe. Uh, okay, this is a great hand. I will keep this one. Um, I'll play Ipnu Rivulet to start and end my turn. We've got Earthshaker Kenra on turn two if they don't do crazy nonsense like last time. <clears throat> Osher Cultivator is totally fine. The card's actually not that good. So... Yeah, that works for me. Ooh, and a dagger of the worthy on that guy too. All right, let's uh, let's do this and this and play Earthshaker Kenra, targeting the cultivator. Let's attack for two, <clears throat> and see if we can't 
have a better first game than we did a uh, second one, or first round than the second one. That's a cool card. Okay. Um, well, we'll play an island. Now we have Aerial Guide, and this doesn't kill, but with Onward it does. So maybe, maybe we, uh, but they draw a card when this guy dies too, but then this goes to my graveyard, so, but then I wasted my whole turn. So let's just play Aerial Guide. It can give the Kenra flying if we really want. They don't have any way of dealing with flying yet. <clears throat> Plus they're in green, well, green-black, so they could have, like, Blighted Bat or Stinging Shot or something. They have a Manolith. All right, well, they're ramping to something. I'm not looking forward to finding out what it is, so I hope I don't. Mirage Mirror is a card. Uh, if I draw something that makes... Oh, I can actually play and equip. So let's do that. Let's play Dagger of the Worthy. Let's equip it to the Earthshaker Kenra. Let's go to combat. And we'll attack with all creatures. Yes. And then use its ability on... Oh. It just is doing it. Okay. That makes sense. <clears throat> I was ready to, like, pick and choose and whatnot. They're just taking 6 and going to 12. That seems cool. I'll take one if you attack. You you do. I take one. I go to 19. I really hope I draw a red. Something that produces red untapped, preferably. Nope. It's a blue. But... Four and four is eight, nine, ten. Oh, I'm two off? Damn, that sucks. I'll still probably do it. <clears throat> Um, let's go to combat. I will, uh, attack with all creatures. Say okay. And then, in response to the ability, I will double this creature's power. Uh, uh, wow. That's a lot of mana that you're tapping. Okay. So now you're exiling it. Well, that's good for you. Um, so that spell fizzles. That's fine. Um, they're still taking two. And then at the end of my turn, I can at least equip the dagger on the flyer. So they go to ten. Uh, and then let's equip. Okay. Use my mana as effectively as possible. If I don't draw a red, then I'll play Mirage Mirror and duplicate this flyer <clears throat> okay they're cycling a desert they've really not done much i i don't know if i'm gonna see what their deck does yet devotee of strength if they have five mana they can make this thing a five four but right now it's a three two that still can't block flying do they attack for one they do i go to 18 I drew a mountain. That's pretty cool. Let's go to combat first. Attack. Its ability doesn't happen because there isn't another creature. Let's play this guy. Okay. <laughs> That's pretty sweet. <laughs> I think I think this deck is is doing pretty well for us. Why do they have so many colors? Are they a Nicol Bolas deck with splashing green for ramp? I don't I don't understand. They're only green so far. Creatures you control gain trample and they'll... Okay, so you just want to draw cards. That's fine. Do you have five mana? One, two, three, four, five. Yeah, you do. Okay. So you're going to make this guy huge and attack in with him. Oh no, you're just going to menace. Okay. Great. And I'll discard my Mirage Mirror. That's fine. What are you attacking with? Both of them. So I take four and go to 14. And I discard my Mirage Mirror and you draw two cards. That's fine. Well, they did all that cool stuff and then we won. So, here we are. 
Into sideboards we go. Um, I don't know that we change anything. They didn't really have one toughness, guys, that we saw. They had that 1-3, and they had an 0-3, and then they had the 2-3. So yeah, Blur of Blades wouldn't necessarily help us here. Um, am I going to keep this hand? Yes, I am. This is a great hand. Any one land and we get Curator of Mysteries? Yeah, no, this is a sweet hand. They go to combat, they end their turn. Okay. Hey, Survivor's Encampment. Uh, is that fine? Yeah, that's fine. Okay, Survivor's Encampment it is. And then we end our turn. <clears throat> Let's see what else is happening. It's another Feral Prowler. Is either the same one or they just have multiples. Ooh, another aerial guide for us. That's pretty sweet. All right. Uh, that's it for us. We don't have anything till turn three. We can take some damage from this guy. We are not as aggressive as our deck made us look to be in game one. <laughs> they cycled a rampaging hippo. Which game one, they just didn't have the opportunity to play at all. So <clears throat> we have three mana. Let's play the Eternal first. It's also a 1-3. We can maybe start drawing some cards. We haven't gotten really to use this guy yet, at least effectively. Um, we have two aerial guides, but we also have Curator of Mysteries at this point, which is what we'll be playing next turn. Because aerial guides are good, but... All right, so they have a Bane Whip Punisher. Good, use that now. That's great. You're, again, you're going to really regret not having used that on my 4-4 four, four flyer. That's fine. They don't have another black, so they end their turn. This desert comes into play tapped, so I'm going to do this. And do Curator of Mysteries. If I draw that other red, I'm probably going to be upset that I haven't played this mountain yet, but that's fine. Let's go to combat. Um, they will actually... Yeah, that would be... Hmm... If they block, they take they lose two life, and if they don't, we just draw a card. But they do get to kill it for free for two life. Um, but it is a 2-2, two -two, so I guess I'll do it. Why not? I can still attack with an 0-2. Cool. That's fine. I'll take you losing two life to an 0-2. <laughs> to me not drawing a card. I'm totally okay with that. Uh, I will... Oh, yeah, that would be me cycling it, which I'm not doing. So, yeah. <clears throat> Let's see. They have lots of colors. Another Feral Prowler, so I was right. They do have more than one. It makes sense. It's a common. One, two, and tapping an untapped creature. For a Ruin Rat, that card's good. But I have a flyer, so I'm not too concerned. Onward is nice. I will actually play my mountain this time, despite, again, the fact that I have a tapped land here. What do I have? One, two, three, four, five. Um, maybe I cycle? I'm going to play an aerial guide first. I know I shouldn't do a pre-combat, but I, I, I'll, I'm probably going to cycle this desert, because we already have one. Um... I'll attack for four. They don't have any mana, so they can't give their Death Touch or Flying. Uh, and then that'll be my turn for now, and then at some point I'll just cycle this. Because then I can scry one, so I can control my draw next turn, at least a little bit. <clears throat> They're cycling another Rampaging Hippo. Wow. Okay. And then tapping two for Driven. All their creatures gain Trample, and... Whenever I take damage from them, draw a card. Okay. Uh, combat happens. Are they attacking with everything? They are. One, two, three, four, five total damage. So I go to 14, but they draw four cards. That's a little rough. I'm going to block one of the one threes. Um, oh, we're still in Declare Attackers. That's fine then. Declare Blockers happens, and I'll block a one three. So I take four, but they draw three cards. Yes, this is all fine. Yes, 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 yes. 
all of that happens. Do they end their turn? They do. I'm going to cycle, please. Thank you. I get to scry one. <clears throat> I will keep that on top. Hoo-hoo, that's nice. Okay. Well, and we just draw it automatically, which means what do we draw for our actual turn? An open into wonder. Wow, that's pretty sweet. Uh, so we have just one extra mana. So let's go to combat. Attack with everybody. Because we're just playing a 5-4. Okay. All right. Let's play that 5-4 out. And now we end our turn. Open into Wonder next turn. We don't even need it. Because Aerial Guide just makes the Manticore fly. Uh, and they take 11 and lose. So hopefully, well, not hopefully, I hope we win, but hopefully they have something that can stop flyers, otherwise they're going to be real upset. They're still tapping lands. Osher Cultivator does not get you there. You have four more available. One can be any color because you just tap the Osher Cultivator. Even if you, like, even if I don't give this flying, it's just six in the air, and then if they block this, they take three, and they still lose. And if they don't block this, they take five, and still lose. Or I could open into Wonder and draw cards with all of them, making them unblockable. <clears throat> and Onward also helps. I don't, I don't know what they're doing. They're playing Ambuscade. Okay. Well, that does happen. Um, four, five, six. Okay. We still win with Onward, but we'll just double Curator of Mysteries power and make it 10 in the air. Do they attack? They do. That seems great for me. One, two, three, four, five, six. I don't lose. I go to nine. But they do. Okay. I win. Um, do I open into Wonder? I don't think I do. Let's just... It's instant, right? I don't want to mess this up. Okay. So let's go to combat. Attack with all creatures. Declare attackers. Sure, that happens. And then still in declare attackers, I will onward on that guy. They've f 6 Looks like I win. I sure do. Okay. Wow. All right. That's pretty sweet. Uh, let's just go right into round three. Why not? Let's... I mean, we can't get a trophy because we lost match one to time. Um, we were battling back pretty well. It just... We got to play a little faster. Sorry that... Uh, sorry that I don't know this format well enough yet. But we will get there. Okay. Cool. We did not win the die roll. It's, it's the same uh, picture, but it's not the same person. This is not bad. Earthshaker Kenra is good on turn two. We've got Open Into Wonder. We've got Kefnet's Last Word, but we've got the Dagger as well. And we saw how well these two work together. So that's pretty sweet. Uh, they're deciding whether to mulligan. They kept seven. We are also keeping. Um, okay. We'll play a Desert. And end our turn. This guy kind of sucks right now because we don't have a lot of mana for it. But all right. So hopefully if they play something, it's only one thing. And it's something that Earthshaker Kenra can make not be able to block. Oh, cool. cool. They just don't play anything. Well, let's play an Earthshaker Kenra. And attack. It's probably going to be a while before we Kefnet's last word. I can't think of anything early enough that we would want to steal. Um, so we just go to combat. Oops, that's silly. <laughs> it made itself unable to block this turn. Because I guess it needed a target. So that's fine. Um, I guess we play the Rivulet next turn. All right, so they have a Disposal Mummy. And they don't have anything to exile. But it is a 2-3. Um... 
We can actually make the Kenra unblockable and let us draw a card with this. I feel like that's the wrong choice, but at the same time, we're literally doing nothing else this turn. So we could. I... I... Hmm. That's all we're going to do, though, with our turn is that, as opposed to playing a dagger and not attacking, I think that's probably a better option here. Let's just play this Dagger of the Worthy and end our turn and see what happens. We got in for two damage early, but, uh, yeah, we can, um, <clears throat> we can see what, no, I'm not attacking. We can see what our opponent has in store for us. Okay. At least my clock's not the one running down forever this game. <clears throat> I say that now. Let's cut to the end and see if that's truly the case. All right. So, oh, wow, they have a 3-1. Okay, uh, and it's a flyer. So I think what we will do is we're probably going to be putting in that Blur of Blades because that's a pretty sweet card. Uh, Gilded Ceridon, and we have two... Um, deserts okay so let's play a land we have four but if we equip we have two we can kill anything they have and then this goes in our graveyard and one more land if we draw it we just have six for either of these so let's uh let's equip and let's do this one and this one okay we've equipped let's go to combat why not? If they block, they take one off blocks, and then whatever creature they block with dies. Okay. That seems fine. Seems perfectly fine. Uh, we have two mana left and nothing to use it for, so we end our turn. <clears throat> we were going to take three in the air regardless. We, did, we don't, oddly enough, don't have any of our flyers, despite all these other games and what they've looked like. So, yeah, we'll take three. Go to 17. We'll be tied up. That seems fine. Okay. And they have five mana. Is it something worth stealing with Kefnet's last word? It is not. It's a top crop lead. There's more flying. That's, uh, that's a thing. But that's usually something that we're okay with. All right. Um, one, two, three, four, five. We have five available. Let's just play a... F uh, if we play this 4-4 four, for four, 5, yeah, I mean, it's either that or Mirage Mirror, which we could activate, but, you know, whatever we activated on, the Mirage Mirror is just going to trade off here. They can exert, it would make, is it other or all? It's just all. So they could deal us 7, take us to 10. But if we draw a land, we just get a 5-4 Menace on the field. Seems pretty sweet. Alright. They are tapping for Ronus's Monument. We can steal Ronus's Monument. That is a thing that we can do. Hmm. Alright. So we're taking 5. They're not exerting. We go to 12. The problem is if we Kefnet's last word. Oh, we drew a land. All right, so we have Granitic Titan. Um, <clears throat> yeah, I think we just attack, make something that it doesn't matter, unable to block. We're just going to try to win this race, although we're kind of far behind, which stinks, but... Worst comes to worst, we can steal their 3-1 with Kefnet's last word so that <clears throat> we can block. Um, well, we wouldn't be able to block. It would be tapped. But we would take considerably less damage um, and win the race. Granitic Titan. It's a 5-4 menace for 6. The game is one point difference, but if they attack out, we're taking 5. If we attack out, they're taking 9. So... Right now we're looking okay. This makes it um, seven. 
if they exert it makes it nine so it's still not enough to kill us they need to have a pump for plus three somehow and then they can kill us this turn with flyers but they need to be able to play a creature to trigger the monument and the pump spell for plus three more and they'd be exerting this guy <clears throat> so I don't envision it happening, but it is a possibility, technically. <sighs> a little stressful, but otherwise we're doing okay. If we draw a land, we can do both of these next turn. If they try to leave the, these guys back as blockers, we can open into Wonder. If we don't draw a blue, we can't do both of these in one turn. <clears throat> but if we do, we can. Okay. They have another flyer. So they're just black-white flyers. That's fine. Oh, they gain three life, too. So they go to 16. They're going to pump something up with Ronus's monument. Actually, okay. So the Aven might be a nice thing to steal with Kefnet. Okay, so that's just a 5-3 Trample Flyer. They can do, again, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. They can do 9 this turn if they attack and exert. <clears throat> yeah, and if we use Kefnet's last word, our lands don't untap during our next untap step, but we would still have two, at least two left. Um, and so we could either equip this turn or um and and then none of our lands will untap or we can equip next turn so that if we draw something for two we at least have options um okay so they're just attacking for seven we go to five because we can't block flyers um that seems fine they play a land and end their turn okay we drew a flyer. That's pretty sweet. Uh, one, two, three, four. We don't have enough to do both, playing the aerial guide and Kefnet's last wording. Um, I think we Kefnet's last word, steal the bird, and then we can either trade them off or kill this. And if we take three, we go to two. So if they Ronus's monument, we just lose. So we kind of have to, uh, all right, um, let's do blue, blue, and two for Kefnet's last word on the Avon. Um, we can't kill them this turn even with equipping. Uh, it's only 11 and they would put them to five so we'd be tied. Um, I can't block with either of these anyway, and if they play a haster, then sure, they got me, but um, I think, and I can't, you can only equip as a sorcery, so I might just equip here. Oh, that doesn't make sense, because it's got a flicked, but they can't block anyway, because they don't have any blockers right now. Hmm. So let's, let's go to combat. And attack with both of these. There's there's no way we can block, so there's no reason to leave them back. And I don't know of any hasters in black and white. Um, and they have one card in hand. So, whatever. I'll make this guy unable to block. It really doesn't matter. Um, so we deal them nine. I'm going to equip to the flyer just in case they have pump of some kind and we can't kill um this makes it a little bit easier i mean obviously if we're trading off with this guy there's almost no way they're pumping this for plus five now but <clears throat> yeah i mean we're probably just going to want to kill this and even with with exert and ronus's monument they can kill us either way but they have to have a creature in these two and i think then they just win yeah, because then they could have 5 damage here or 6 damage here, and so whichever one we block, the other one still kills us. But 
we had to try. Um, so let's uh, let's see what they do. They just go straight to combat, which means we don't lose. They are attacking with both, and they are exerting. In Declare Attackers, I have nothing to say. They have two cards in hand and seven mana open. But it's a 5-3 against a 3-3 three, three or a 4-2. And that's exerted, so it's not untapping next turn, so I'm blocking this way. Okay. Do I win? Destroy all creatures, and their lands don't untap. <laughs> okay, but they still have four mana open. And we have none, so we just end our turn with nothing. But we can play both of these next turn, which is pretty sweet, because we have flying blockers and ground blocker. Okay, so they ended their turn as well that's cool i'll play a land uh i'll play the kenra for two i'll play the aerial guide for three and i'll equip on the nimble blade kenra for two all right what do you got? You used Bantu's Last Reckoning, so I'm hoping you've got something to back it up. Even with this, well, they have a 2-4. If we draw land, we can open into Wonder, but we don't have to, because this gives the Kenra flying. They put Desert's Hold on it. Okay. They don't have a desert, so they don't gain any life. But now it can't attack or block. That's unfortunate, but not the end of the world. Um, I'll play a Survivor's Encampment. I'll tap three for a Mirage Mirror. Oh, the prowess trigger happens. I'm like, why? What's what are we waiting for? We're waiting for me because I'm dumb. All right. Um, so Mirage Mirror happens. We need two to activate it, and we have three more. So let's go with one and two, the colorless, to re-equip and put it on the aerial guide instead. Because <sighs> we still have uh, Mirage Mirror to block if we have to. Um, and so let's go to combat. And attack for four flying. We did not have a lot of our flyers this game. I was surprised. Especially against this deck that has a lot of flying. It would have been helpful. Alright. I mean, I'm assuming they're attacking. But clearly Mirage Mirror is just going to become a copy of it and block. Even if it gets pumped with Ronus's Monument, I don't mind the mirror dying because we just win. So, unless they have a flyer, which they've had many of already. So, oh, sweet. Okay, we just win. Awesome. All right. All right, sideboard it is. Um, they did have that one flyer. Clearly, Kefnet's last word was very helpful this game, and they have Bantu's last reckoning. So I don't want to take that out. This was would probably have been good for us so i don't want to take that out either but what do i want to take out there really wasn't much right i don't know if the mirror is incredible here um maybe i take the mirror out for the blur of blades i'm gonna try that that may be stupid because I just took out a rare for a common, and it's a rare that can do some pretty sweet things. I mean, it can become a copy of Ronus's Monument, but then I have to tap two for it to become a copy and then play something to trigger it. So I don't know. I don't know that it's that good. I'd rather be playing creatures and drawing cards and stuff. So let's see if that works for us. Uh, worst comes to worst, we are up a game. We can always put it back in. 
So, all right. So they disconnected for a period of time. We have four lands and all high drops. That kind of sucks. But at least the high drops we have have cycling. And I would probably just cycle this one since we well, we don't have the second red. So that would kind of feel bad, but we'll see. That's It's a little rough, but we are, again, we're still up a game. I just would rather not have to, you know, again, fight with my clock towards um, game three. But we shall see. Um, oh, this mountain looks cool. I didn't notice that, like, the horns are, are on the ground like that because they were destroyed. That looks really nice. I like a lot of these, like, new art lands. It makes sense for certain um, for certain things. Obviously, this is Nam and Kent land. And, in fact, look at them. It's There's this one and then this one. So, yeah, it's like <laughs> you get to see what happens um, to that place. It's literally the same land. It's just destroyed. Yeah, the, the opponent disconnected before and then came back, but it still took them a while to make a decision, so I don't know if they're having, like, uh, internet connection issues or whatever, but um, but we'll see. I don't... I, even though we already lost a match to time, that's kind of more so the reason why I don't want to see somebody else lose to time. It, it's just... It sucks. When it dies, we control the desert. We discard a card. That's fine. And it's a 2-1. That's pretty good for them, because... We're not playing anything till turn three at this point. Yeah, that's a sweet one. Um, yeah, we're still going to cycle the Ceridon, but it's not going to be on our turn. We'll do it on theirs. Because <clears throat> there's no land that we can play, so... Yep, we take two. Whoops. Yeah. That's fine. All right, we got Blur of Blades. We <laughs> we could use it now. That would be foolish. Let's play the Thorned Moloch. We'd still have to discard a card, though, right? Hmm. Okay. Uh, let's play a land. We just have three, but we can have we'll have a Curator next turn. So let's play the Moloch. It's got first strike, but it's only when it's attacking. So as a blocker, it doesn't work. But Blur of Blades kind of does the same thing, right? So, hold on. Do we just pass here? Maybe we do. Unfortunately, we, we didn't have double red, so we can't Blur of Blades and cycle this. So, <clears throat> let's just end our turn here. And keep up Blur of Blades for their camel. And if we have to discard a card, we'll just discard the Desert Sardon since I f 6 before. <sighs> yep, let's do it. Blur of Blades. Um, pay the two. And kill it before the monument goes off. Cool. Now we can F6. Oh, they didn't have a desert. I was like, I was, you know, ready to discard. Okay. Um, so let's play my land. And let's get out this Curator of Mysteries. Curator of Mysteries does a really good job against those who serve, that's for sure. Hmm. Okay. That's the end of that turn. I don't know that we have to cycle anymore now that I've, you know, not had to do it like two or three times. Now I don't know that it even needs to happen. We'll see. If I draw another red, we're good because we'll have six and Granitic Titan mana. So I don't need to open into Wonder on this. And right now I don't need to open into Wonder. Well, right, I don't know. Right now I, I probably just wouldn't be attacking with Thorn Moloch for a while. <clears throat> And they can't block this anyway. Although if they did, uh, it's still a 2-4, so it would just die. Although if they play something, it becomes a 4-6, which is annoying. Um, but conveniently, we have a 6-4, so we could deal with it. 
Um, well, there are flash creatures in white. I'm okay with it. We're going to be more aggressive than them this game. If they're bluffing, they're bluffing. Congrats, you got two damage in. But I don't want to lose my 4-4 four -four over some stupid flash creature that they play. Torment of Venom. Okay. Um, well, now I can discard. <laughs> now I can discard Desert Saradon. Um, sacrifice another non-land permanent. Well, uh, I can't. I literally can't do that option. So I either discard a card or lose three life. I'm going to lose three life. Lose three life. I have a 1-1 one, one flyer. <laughs> um, which can still get in, and it still likes uh, cycling and stuff. So let me play a land this turn. One, two, three, four, five. Well, we can Thorn Moloch if we really want. <clears throat> um, let's go to combat first. I'll still attack for one. I guess we Moloch here. Um, again, I'd like another red. Although, another anything gets us the Ceridon, but another red gets us the Titan, and I'd prefer the Menace. So let's play the Moloch. Kind of a shame that the 2-4 is putting in some work here, although the Torment of Venom helped with that quite a bit, so... <clears throat> Is it an instant? It is. So they could they would have just done it in response to me blocking. Um, and then it would have died as opposed to just using it anyway. And then it didn't die. Yeah. I mean, I liked Amonkhet Draft a lot, but I did it a lot as well. So now being able to do this is pretty sweet. Okay, so it does become a 4-6 and they just have a 3-3 three, three flyer which they can gain three life off of. Did we see any of these in our draft? I don't feel like we did. I know I wasn't looking for white, but that doesn't mean that, you know, <clears throat> that any didn't come around. Attack for four, that will happen. Do I block? Um, no, because this guy has first strike when he's attacking, and I can onward on him if they decide to block with this 3-3. Three, three. Um... I did draw the land. So let's let's go to combat and only attack with this guy and see what happens. If they block, I'd be more than happy to kill their 3-3 with my 2-2 two, two first striker that will become a 4-4 four, four, or 4-2. Four, Do they block? They don't. Sweet. Well, then let's play Granitic Titan. <clears throat> Works for me. Now, if this becomes a 4-6 again with, with Ronus's Monument, I'm still not blocking. Um, although I could. I could double block and then see what they want to kill. Um, because they wouldn't be able to kill both. But... Yeah, I guess I, I would have to block because I'd go to 5 and that's a little low for me having a only a 1-1 one, one flyer against their 3-3, three, three, so. Yeah. I would probably double block and make them make the choice whether to kill my Menace or my Flyer. It would probably just be the Menace, though. At least if I were them, that's what I would do. Hey, they did something. They played a Disposal Mummy. So it makes this guy a 5-5 five, five Flyer. Okay. 5-5 five, five, Trample Flyer. And they can exile Blur of Blades from my graveyard, which I don't care about. <clears throat> um, Alright, they are attacking for 5 in the air. Do I block 1 of it? I don't know that that's relevant. I don't think it is. So, no, that's fine. If they have a pump, another another pump of some kind, then maybe I lose, but I'm just going to take five. Okay. All right. Uh, it's going to be tough to come back, but, ooh, that's pretty good. Um, hmm. 
Okay, well, let's, um... Let's go to combat. They can deal just enough to kill my Granitic Titan, but they don't know that I have Onward for three. Um, so I'll just go like that and like that. Because um, I'll use Onward on either one, to be honest. And I will attack with both and see what they do. If they don't block this Menace guy, they're just going to take 10 damage this turn. Which I still don't know is enough. Okay. So yeah, they're making me do it. Um, question is, do I? <clears throat> I think I still do. Oh, but I can actually, I can Onward and um, the Prowess trigger will go off saving him and make this guy 10. So I'm going to do it that way. That was good for me. Okay. Prowess trigger goes off. You take 10 off of the menace creature and go to 8. I am at 4. Um, if, unfortunately, if they play any creature with the 2 cards or what will be 3 cards in their hand, I lose. Um, because even with blocking... Yeah, and this only lets me scry one if I cycle, and if I cycle and draw a land, it just negates the fact that I paid the mana, so. <clears throat> we'll have to see. If they have a creature, I lose. Do I lose? Actually, do I lose anyway? I totally just lose anyway, don't I? Yep. Yeah. Alright, so we'll concede this game and go to the next one so that we can save some time. Um, I don't... I don't know what else we could have played. They have a lot of flyers, so even though that's a good blocker, it's not that good. Um, they were white-black, so Jace's defeat does nothing. <clears throat> uh, Cunning survivors are still bad. Compelling arguments still bad. Mirage Mirror is technically something. Sunset Pyramid is technically something also, but I don't know what I'd take out for it. I like my creatures. Um... So let's just let's run back and see if we can't do better. All right, I would like to play first, indeed. One, two, three, blue with two blue three drops. It's not good with Manticore in my hand, but I'll keep it nonetheless. Eternal and Aerial Guide is a really fun combo, so hopefully that gets to go off. <clears throat> Although they do have. Uh, Torment of Venom shenanigans like we saw before, so. Again, I don't want them to lose to time, but it is getting down a little bit. We'll see. We'll see how this game goes. <clears throat> Whoa. They lost a lot of time, but they are back. So are we. I will play a land and end my turn. Yeah, they are sub five minutes. They are going to have to rush this like crazy. <clears throat> I feel bad because I was the one that was like, I don't want to win this way, but I will. And, you know, now they're at four and a half minutes. So, yeah, I'll play Eternal first. And see what happens. We've got open into wonder, which is nice. So they can't be blocked, and then I draw cards if that's the case, but whatever. I'd like some red. I like my manticore. <laughs> okay, are those who serve. Hey, a red. Just what I asked for. Um, I guess I attack, right? Do I open into wonder? No, I'd rather aerial guide this turn, so I'll attack, and either you lose two life, or uh, I draw a card. And you take one. You'll block. Okay. A flick two happens. I go to my second main phase. And I play an aerial guide. Which means that you will probably not be blocking further. Although they did have a lot of flyers. So I'm, I don't know why I said that specifically. But <clears throat> we'll see. They have four. Let's see what they do with it. 
I'm definitely not going to run out their clock. I think that's kind of rude. Uh, I'll actually play and try to win. And in fact, maybe I can see if I can win before their clock goes down. Lethal Sting. So they put a minus one on this guy and kill my 2-2. Two -two. Okay. That's fine. I can still open into Wonder if I don't draw anything else. I didn't. Um, so I'll actually draw two cards. Oh. Um, well, that's a damn shame. I just clicked right through that. Okay. Well, uh, it doesn't really make much sense to attack now, does it? Um, I'll play a land and in my turn. That's it. That's annoying. They had f6 and I f6 and I f6 when it was my turn, not theirs. So, lovely. <clears throat> Differences between online and paper magic. Hey, Ronus's monument. Okay. Play creature. Yep, they play creature. You can attack me for three if you'd like. I will go to 17. Okay, you're attacking me for three. You're not attacking me for three. You... If I draw red, I just have Manticore, which is really sweet. I didn't. I have Thorn Moloch, though. One, two, three. One, two, three. Ooh, I can do both. Um, so let's do that. Let's open into Wonder on him. X being one. And say okay. Uh, go to Combat attack not blocked i draw two cards yep okay and then one two three thorned malik um it's still 20 to 17 they could very well get us with this guy after a while but We'll see. I've got open into wonder for these, and oh, and I've got the other red now for the for the Manticore. So we're good. I'll, I'll probably save open into wonder for the Manticore, even though blocking would still not be a bad thing on this guy. Um, it is a five four. Yeah, no, maybe maybe I don't use open into wonder on this guy. It's a 5-3, and it's not being exerted, and it has trample, so I'd still take 3 instead of 5, <clears throat> so I'll just take 5. I'll play a land, and tap 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and play the Manticore Eternal. I'm drawing a lot of lands. That's a little unfortunate, but it happens. Um, question is, do I attack? I don't think so. I'll take three in the air, and if they exert this guy, maybe five on the ground, or five in the air, and none on the ground, that would be... Yeah. Okay. It definitely happens. Um... <clears throat> Did they exert it, though? I assume they do, right? They do exert. Okay. So I'll take... I have to take the air damage. And I prevent all damage that would be dealt, so I could just... This guy has first strike, so if I open into wonder... Well, if I open into wonder, they all get in anyway. Five, six, seven, eight, nine. Bring them to 11. Um, and I draw three cards. That seems good. I'm going to take some damage. It sucks. Take eight, go to seven. This is a close one. Ooh, Earthshaker Kenra. Okay, so I can make those who serve unable to block this turn. And then I don't have to use Open into Wonder, but I still probably just do because there's nothing else I'm playing this turn. Okay, so we Earthshaker Kenra for two. 
and then the those who serve can't block. Um, and then I'll open into wonder for four. One, two, three, four, and tap out for it. Seems good. Prowess trigger happens. I draw four cards. Do I just lose? I just lose on the crack back. Because <laughs> um, I can't play anything. Hmm. All right, so how do I attack? That's then the question, isn't it? Um, I don't have any flyers. Um, this is an attack next turn, but this is for three, and this is for three. So I go to one, which means I have to have two blockers. Oh, and they have, they're going to have trample two. So it'll be oh no this is not a this is not attacking we said that so it'll be a max of three damage at least with what's on board so I can leave eternal back as a blocker so I attack with these two as well and draw three cards because I have to take the six in the air but if they Ronus's monument on a flyer it didn't matter what I left back I just lose and so they're just gonna do that I assume. They impeccable timing and kill my first striker. That's fine. I'm pr I, again, probably just lose this game. And like I said, I'm not going to be a jerk and run out their clock by just doing stuff and doing stuff and doing stuff. I'm just going to draw my cards. Draw my cards. Great. That's fantastic draws. Wow. Ugh, that's rough. All right. If they have a creature, they win. Do they have a creature? They win. Good games. Well, uh, let's let them. Uh, yeah, I mean, if their time goes down to zero, I will. I will concede if they're gonna win anyway. But I want to. I want to make sure that it plays out. Yeah, I mean, it's eight damage. I'm at seven. That's fine. Don't run their clock out, but let's let them kill me. They have one minute left. That feels good. That always feels good. Props. All right. Well, we went one and two with this deck. That's a shame. We won, and we completed the league. Huh, that's rough. Um, this was the first. It is a learning experience just like anything else. I hope that you guys enjoyed. Um, you guys can definitely... Let's see if we can go back to the deck. Um, review previous deck. It's right here. So I hope you guys enjoyed. Uh, we're going to be trying to do these every Saturday like we did with Amon Ket. Um, let us know what you thought of the deck in the comments down below. Did I draft wrong? Did I play wrong? Did I play too slow? Uh, <laughs> any and all of those opinions are welcome. Please let us know, like I said, down below. Um, this has been Geek For All. I have been Joe. Thank you guys so much for watching. Check out some of the other videos that are popping up on the screen right now. Uh, we have, um, product openings. We have uh, story reviews from Hour of Devastation. We're going to be doing a lot more drafts, like I said, so you can subscribe by clicking on our logo right there. And guys, as we always say, in whichever video of ours you watch next, we will see you all next time. Thanks, everybody.